What's up, my comic comrades? With the Joker film on its way to becoming the number one grossing rated R movie of all time, as well as it being Villains Month, we thought it'd be fun to count down the top 10 Joker stories of all time. Also, many of you have been asking for the release date for our podcast. Well, we're excited to announce that the first official episode of Variant the Podcast will release next week on October 30th. It'll post both here on the main Variant channel and its own separate YouTube channel for the first few episodes. Then after that, the video version will live on its own channel going forward. For those of you who just prefer audio, it'll of course be available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and more. We'll have complete details on where to subscribe to the new podcast YouTube channel and its audio podcast platforms next week. But I can tell you one thing, both Tim and I are stupid excited to get it going. With that said, let's count down some Joker stories. Kicking off the list is none other than the Joker and the Joker Returns in Batman issue 1 from 1940. Of course the Joker's first appearance had to make it on this list, as without this story we would not have the Clown Prince of Crime today. And what's crazy is originally the Joker was intended to be a one and done character dying at the end of Batman issue 1. But the editor knew he was too good of a character to just kill off. Issue 1 featured two Joker stories, both of which portrayed Joker as a homicidal clown who injects venom into his victims, killing them, leaving a permanent grin on their face. And I gotta say, Bob Kane's art made it look pretty terrifying, especially for the 40s. This is also where we would get the introduction of his now iconic Joker calling card. Mix all of that as well as his twisted sense of humor and Joker's horrifying pale white skin, green hair, and red grin, all of which was loosely based off of Conrad Veidt's character in The Man Who Laughs, and it's easy to see the Joker was gonna become one of Batman's greatest villains, ultimately becoming his greatest villain. Next up we have Sleigh Ride from Detective Comics issue 826. This glorious one issue story was written by Batman the Animated Series co-creator Paul Dini, meaning off the bat you would assume this is going to be an awesome story, and you would assume correctly. The story takes place during Christmas time where the Joker has kidnapped Tim Drake Robin, taking him on a not so joyful joyride. The Joker knocks him out with gas and ties Tim up with ropes and Christmas lights, telling Tim the whole time that he's not going to kill him. He just wants to call a truce between them and get some eggnog milkshakes with his old buddy. But in the meantime, Joker is killing people by running them over with the stolen car. Before ultimately being like, yeah, I was just instilling false hope in you. Of course I'm going to kill you. What made this all the more terrifying was that the Joker had previously already killed Jason Todd Robin. So it was kind of nerve wracking being like, is DC going to have the Joker kill off another Robin? But in the end, that wasn't the case. And all I have to say is read the story. It's only one issue, a super easy read, but amazing. We have The Laughing Fish in Detective Comics issue 475 and 476. Like every Joker story on this list, this is one of the most iconic Joker stories ever, giving us the introduction of the now infamous Joker Fish. Basically, fishermen in Gotham find that fish have been mutated into looking like the Joker which has Batman like, what is the Joker up to now? And I gotta say, if that was real, that would be completely and utterly terrifying. I mean, imagine if a fish resembled a Joker. That's the stuff freaking nightmares are made of. Anyway, we basically find out that the Joker had poisoned Gotham's water supply and mutated the fish to look like him so that he could copyright them and make money off of every fish sold. But he finds out you can't copyright a natural resource. So he goes after the political elite, all while Batman is trying to stop him. The plot of the story may sound odd, but it works so well and shows how odd and twisted Joker's sense of humor and sense of reality is. It's so good, in fact, that the story became even more famous when Batman the Animated Series adapted it for an episode, also titled The Laughing Fish, which is also one of the best episodes from the series. At lucky number 7 we have Death of the Family from the New 52 Batman run by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. At the beginning of the New 52, Joker had his face removed, literally skinned off. And when the Joker returns, Batman wasn't the target, at least not directly. Joker instead was coming after Batman's loved ones, like Alfred, Robin, Batgirl, Dick Grayson, Red Hood, and so on and so forth. Hence the name, Death of the Family. So the whole story deals with Batman trying to stop Joker from killing everyone he holds closest to his heart. It also forces Batman's hand to tell the Bat family a secret that he's been keeping from them for a very long time. In the end, I think it's one of, if not the best Joker stories within recent years. It's gruesome and just displays so well how deep the Joker can cut Batman at his core and attack him personally. It also explores the weird twisted love that Joker has for Batman. What I'm saying is, read it. 
this next Joker story gave us one of the most famous Batman covers of all time, and that is Joker's five-way revenge that takes place in Batman issue 251. Again, not only is this a classic and iconic Neil Adams Batman cover, it's also the story that's credited for bringing back the homicidal sadistic Joker that makes him such a threat to Batman. From the first page of the book, the story tells us that the clown prince of crime is coming back to Gotham to get revenge on everyone who's ever wronged him. Now, of course, Batman will always be his number one target, as he's the one who ultimately puts him away all the time, but he realized this past time that there was a member of his gang who ratted him out. But since this is the Joker, instead of punishing the one that gave him up, Joker decided to kill all five of his gang members. Hence the name of the story, Joker's Five-Way Revenge. And obviously, Batman is caught in the middle trying to stop the Joker. It's easily a fan favorite for a good reason. I'll also mention that our good buddy Comic Tom is actually giving away several copies of this issue in his Mystery Mail Call. So if you want a chance to win an original copy of Batman 251, definitely check out his Mystery Mail Call subscription box. The link for that is in the description below. But now, on to number five. Making the top five is a comic that is near and dear to my heart and that is Mad Love, written and illustrated by Batman the Animated Series co-creators Paul Dini and Bruce Timm. Before this was turned into a comic, it was an episode from Batman the Animated Series. It's actually my third favorite episode of the series. It's that good. If you want to see what my top 10 favorite episodes are, we'll put a link for that right here. The story is just all around great, and in my opinion, the best story to date that explores the relationship between the Joker and Harley Quinn. It also gives us the origin of Harley Quinn, showing us how Dr. Harleen Quinzel fell in love with the Joker, ultimately becoming Mr. J's new improved Harley Quinn, as she puts it. For me, everything about this comic and the episode it was based off of is flawless from the Bruce Tim art to Paul Dini storytelling. It's one of the best examples I can give someone for why I love Batman the Animated Series so much, and a big reason as to why the Joker and Harley Quinn are two of my favorite villains. Joker is my favorite villain, and Harley Quinn is my favorite female comic book character. Can I just also mention one of the best scenes and lines in the entire comic, at least one of my favorites, where Joker is at the desk trying to think of a way to kill Batman, but Harley Quinn in lingerie jumps on top of his desk trying to get his attention, but he says, I'm busy. To which she gives an amazing line saying, Oh, come on, Puddin. Don't you want to rev up your Harley? Vroom, vroom. And Joker responds by pushing her off the desk. It's just such a clever way of having Harley ask the Joker for some sexy time, which he's not interested in, like, at all, and sums up the relationship perfectly. Next in line is Batman Death in the Family. Not only is this an amazing Joker story, it's one of the most important books in the entire Batman mythos. Besides the death of Batman's parents, this story contains what I, and I'm sure many others, would consider to be the second most important death in Batman's history the death of Jason Todd, the second Robin, by the hands of the Joker. I mean, this story is what made my number nine pick so crazy, because since we knew the Joker had already killed a Robin, we were like, oh no, is the Joker gonna kill Tim Drake as well? He already killed one Robin, why not another? Also, if you didn't have enough evidence already, the story definitely cemented why Joker is Batman's greatest enemy. Because Joker killing Jason Todd still has effects on Bruce today, and only pushes the notion that it's wrong for Batman to put young partners in harm's way. The story is also a classic because it's the fans who voted to kill Jason Jason Todd, which was a fantastic decision because if Joker didn't kill him, we wouldn't have gotten the epic Red Hood. Making the top three is the Joker graphic novel written by Brian Azzarello with fantastic art by Lee Bermejo. This story is solely about the Joker. It's a Joker graphic novel. And at the very beginning of the issue, we see the Joker released from Arkham and getting picked up by someone called Johnny Frost, who now works for him. A good part of the story actually follows Joker from Johnny's perspective and gives us an idea of what it would be like to work for the Joker. And it's freaking crazy, especially since the Joker isn't happy to see what's going on in Gotham's underworld while he's been gone. And trust me, no one is safe from Joker's wrath, not even other iconic Batman villains like Riddler, Penguin, and more. What's also great about the story is it gives us a very grounded street-level look at Joker, and again, just how crazy he is. It's almost like a character study of the Joker, as we see him at his vulnerable moments, curling up to Harley Quinn, crying, which is a look at the Joker we rarely, if ever, see. But then we also get scenes of him, you know, like skinning a man alive. So I think it's fair to say this novel runs the gamut. Mix that with the fact that this is solely a Joker story, literally Batman is only in it for a couple of pages, is what puts it so high on the list. If you're a Joker fan in any sense and you haven't read this, you really need to get on that. Just missing the top spot is Batman the Man Who Laughs 
Putting it simply, this comic is a fantastic one-shot, which is written by Ed Brubaker and artist Doug Mankey. That gives us an epic retelling of Batman and the Joker's first meeting. Like literally at this point in time, Gotham doesn't even know if Batman is a real thing. In any case, just like in the original meeting of Batman and the Joker from the 1940s Batman issue one, Batman, the police, and Jim Gordon find dead victims all over Gotham with an evil clown-like grin on their face, forcing them to find the man responsible. And the issue follows a lot of the original beats from Batman 1, at least the main premise, just putting it more in an updated modern setting, and it's absolutely fantastic. It also expands on some things, and you just really see why from the start, Batman and the Joker were destined to be at war with one another. It's a great retelling of the first time the Joker and Batman met and fought each other. And let's be honest, stories that set the stage for why characters have such hate or love for one another is always interesting. Especially when you're talking about Batman and the Joker, two opposite ends of the spectrum. It's so, so good. And finally, at number one, is not just my favorite Joker story of all time, it is literally my favorite comic book story of all time, only to be rivaled by The Dark Knight Returns, and that is Batman the Killing Joke. This story to me will probably forever be the most perfect representation of why the Joker is Batman's greatest enemy. Just the lengths Joker went in this story just to prove a point to Batman is insane. First he shoots, paralyzes, strips naked, and takes pictures of Barbara Gordon. Then kidnaps Jim Gordon, strips him down naked, ties him to a carnival ride, and forces him to watch images of his naked wounded daughter. To prove to Batman that even the most upright good citizen, in this case Jim Gordon, can go mad and turn evil with just one bad day. And and that's just the overview. When you read it, it's even crazier than what I just said, if you could imagine that. The Killing Joke also gives us the closest thing we've ever gotten to the Joker's origin. And shocker, that's amazing too. I can't say enough good things about this comic. It's my favorite comic book story of all time, which is why I was so let down when the animated movie version wasn't so great. Speaking of The Killing Joke, here's a quick reminder about our giveaway. We've partnered with Comic Tom to give away five first print copies of The Killing Joke. And you can find links for complete details on how to enter in the description. We'll also throw links for Comic Tom and his mystery mail call in the description as well. But you only have until October 29th to enter. So go check it out and give yourself a chance to win a copy of what we consider the best Joker story of all time. Anyway, that's just our list of the top 10 Joker stories. I'm sure your list may look different, so let us know what your top 10 is in the comment section below. First up for the week of the 23rd, we have The Flash issue 81. With Zoom unlocking the new Forever Force, just how powerful is he? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Now we have the amazing Spider-Man issue 32. Miguel O'Hara is back in the present and needs to get to Peter Parker. But as he's currently being held in an off-the-books Roxxon prison, this is easier said than done. Here we have Marauders issue 1. Even in this glorious new dawn, mutant kind faces hardships and oppression from their human counterparts. Led by Captain Kate Pride and funded by Emma Frost and the Hellfire Trading Company, the Marauders sail the seas to protect those hated and feared. And finally, we have Batman Superman issue 3. Is Superman the newest member of the Batman Who Laughs Secret Six? It certainly looks that way, and Batman may be powerless to stop the Man of Steel and his own demented doppelganger. And that's going to bring another episode of Vance to a close, but if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, be sure to subscribe. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.